Holy cow. So it's another day, and uh, as usual, it's hotter than hell. It's like 100% humidity again. It's like 93. Today, the U.S. women's national soccer team was given keys to the city, New York City, for the uh, parade, ticker tape parade, even though they don't use ticker tape anymore. Got another box from pearlpartsdirect.net. Some uh, safety glasses with lanyard. I wear glasses, so. But thank you. You know, I have a bunch of these actually. And they sent me ProPartsDirect.net neon T-shirt. Their logo in the back. Dry fit too. USA. USA. Nice shirt. Thank you very much, guys. Anyway, so, this. I'm going to tell you about this. This baby is in rough shape. The uh, little small caster wheels have seen better days for sure. Brittle, bald, rounded off. I mean, they're supposed to be bald, but you know. You know what I mean. Condition. Um, that's missing. Uh, it seems like the PTO pulley over there, right? Uh, tension pulley for the uh, to engage the PTO seems to be really tight. You know, not to mention the lever that you use to engage the PTO is busted and loose, and the lever here. The lever here is broken off a piece. There's supposed to be a long stick bar with a hole right around here so that this thing can hook into it so that when you push forward on that lever, this goes up. And when that goes up, it tightens this pulley. So that's that. Then there's this tension pulley is missing some kind of uh, spacer in between there that keeps this um, from, you know, not being so loose, you know. It's like a sleeve, metal sleeve type thing that goes in there that keeps it straight, but it's missing. So now this is just jingling around like that. So that's another thing. Uh, God knows where I'm gonna get a lever like that. I suppose I could kind of fabricate it, right? But then you can't fabricate something that's missing. This is the drive speed lever is missing, right? So you can control the speed of uh, how fast it goes. Um, I, I don't know where this leads to, right? But it looks like there was a wire in there or something. And then there's this thing here. I don't know where that goes either. Looks like there may have been a wheel on here, some kind of a pulley, I'm not sure. So it's missing quite a few things. Uh, it's in complete disarray. As you can see, this has been welded there before. And the uh, throttle cable is completely dunsky. This has also been welded before. So what I did uh, last night when we were off camera is that I was um, curious as to what was in here, right? And so uh, while the fuel was kind of light brownish, right? Not, it wasn't that bad fuel, you know? I uh, disconnected the fuel line from the carburetor since I'm going to do a carburetor clean today anyway. Pulled it out and drained all the fuel. Um, there's a fuel shutoff switch under here. This is closed. I believe that's open. Um, also, I uh, tried to pull start it a few times, and believe it or not, it turned over and ran for about a second. So I know the engine runs and everything. I just need to clean that carburetor. Um, to control this, since I don't have a... Uh, 
cable, a throttle cable for this. I mean, I do, but I haven't put it on yet, right? I had to loosen this just to get it to pull it up and then tighten it again just to keep this at choke, right? And then uh, once it blew a little bit and kind of ran, I uh, loosened this again, pulled it so that it was off a choke and about three quarters uh, throttle and uh, nothing happened. So if I was going to test this engine, I'd have to put a new throttle cable on just, you know, so I can, you know, mess with the idle and the throttle speed and all that stuff. But I'll do that after I clean this carburetor and see what condition it's in. I have a couple of uh, throttle cables that I could just put on there temporarily. But uh, I'm thinking that I might not try to fix all this because I'd have to get a new lever. I'd have to try to fabricate a lever here, which I don't really want to do. I could just buy another lever if I'm going to buy that lever. But uh, they're kind of expensive, you know. Uh, I don't want to spend any money on this, you know what I mean. Uh, I could probably maybe get 500 bucks if I was super lucky if I got this all fixed up and stuff. So if I'm going to go spend maybe $100 on parts just to get this going again. And I, plus, um, you know, the front wheels and stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be able to get a lot of money for this, you know. So, however, if I... Oh, I want to show you something else. So this tire is Dunsky, right? The, um, I guess you call it a pulley. The pulley that's on this tire is all bent out of shape. See? It's all bent. It's even worse on the bottom. Same goes for the other side, as you can see. So, I'm thinking that I'm just going to try to get the engine running and know for sure that the engine runs, right? And I'm going to part this out. I'm going to take the caster wheels off. I'm going to try to take the spindles and the pulleys off. I'm going to take that engine and keep it or sell it, right? I could get maybe 200 bucks for that engine. You know, for some other landscaper guys who has blown their engine, right? This is... They use these for mostly these kind of mowers, every kind, Snapper, Xmark, Skag, whatever. All the Kawasaki FB460Vs you see are on landscaping machines like this. So I'm sure I could sell the engine for two something. So, you know, if I can sell the engine for two something and take all the parts off of it and like that gas tank, get 50 bucks for this gas tank. It's big, you know, and it seems to be clean and in good shape. So uh, if I could score three three fifty out of parts and stuff for this, I'd rather do that. Uh, I'm not going to bother taking this to the dump and getting scrap metal for it, even though it would be. I don't know how much I'd, I'd get for you know scrap for that, maybe fifty bucks or something. But I'm going to take all the wheels off of it and to lift it into my van to drive it over there and weigh it and then take it off again. It's not worth my time, honestly. So I'm just going to leave it on my curb and let some other scrappers take it. Of course, I'm going to take out the blades underneath and all that other jazz. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to tear this down. But you know, this is just a, um, a thought that I had of what I'm planning on doing. You know, it's a, it's an interim decision, if you will. Um, but number one is I do need to clean that carb, see the condition of it, and get that engine running. If I get that engine running, then I think uh, my decision will be easier on what to do. So we're going to get started. Uh, there's two bolts here that hold the carburetor, very similar to Briggs. Um, it's 12 millimeter will fit, one half will too, but not very tight. It's not a good sign when it's difficult to turn like that. is just the um, reservoir where it uh, leads to the air filter housing. Call it a air filter base, I guess. 
two long studs that bolt into the intake manifold. It's loose enough to hand loosen the stud now, and it's a long one, six inches. Very similar to the Briggs. Let's get this done ski. This one's not that important, so I think this is actually okay. If you want to just put some, blow some adhesive on here, just have this stick there because um, it is just the seal between the air intake, basically. It's not between the carburetor and the intake, just to the air cleaner. Some people run it without air cleaners. The uh, See the tension spring here? Wasn't even connected. The little spring here on the governor wasn't even connected. This should go right in there. One less step to do. So this is the throttle and it's a Z-bend. Don't forget where that goes. It's, uh, it's a breather tube here that it came off of, see? This goes right there to this breather tube. This is the choke. This carburetor is dirty. Dirty on the outside. Inside it could be, it could surprise you. Here's the uh, adjustment, fuel mixture adjustment screw. It's pretty easy to turn. Yes, I know it's leaking. I don't care. I'm going to trash this deck anyway, I think. And these decks are actually made very well. I'm going to brush this off. Where is that brush that I always need? It's never on. Huh. This one. I've used this for like a while. When the wife is doing the dishes and she, you know, used this enough, throws it out. I walk by the kitchen and I look in the garbage can because I'm a garbage picker. I look even in my garbage can. I says, oh my God, are you throwing away this? She goes, yeah, it's trash. I says, it could be trash to you, but I could clean carburetors with it. All right, go ahead, take it. Garbage picker? I says, oh yeah, you want me to go out and buy one just to clean carburetors? I'm saving the household money. She's like, yeah, sure. As I walk away, she whispers under her breath, garbage picker. Always brush away from the orifices so that you don't recontaminate the holes with the dust and the grime and the debris and the pearl. So, you know, I'm just cleaning this so that you don't, you know, you can see what you're doing, check out the condition of it better, you know. This is an original Kawasaki um, carburetor, so this is actually worth some, some money right there, you know. Uh, 
Um, they do make aftermarket ones, I believe. Very cheap, like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. And there's a lot of crap on there, but now it's, you know, now it looks okay. Uh, made in Japan, of course. And this is uh, Makuni. Makuni Corporation. Alright, so it should be a uh, 10 millimeter to get that bull jet, uh, bull nut off. Japanese engines all use 10 millimeter. Yes, I know gas is going everywhere. I don't care. So that was a good sign that it just came off like that. And it feels kind of smooth, maybe a little dusty. So you can see some dust. Here we go. I'm going to break the seal and check it out. Yes, I know I'm getting it everywhere. Alright, check it out. Not terrible, but it's got like some dust bunny in there or something. Brown. It's got a little bit of water in there. It's got some gum. It's just like gum. Cleans up okay. So it's not, you know, really bad. It's good. So I'm just going to blow out that carburetor with some carb cleaner. Gasket stuck on there. I won't disturb it because the seal is good. If it's naturally sealing on there, don't mess with it. Because once you take that off, the seal isn't natural. It'll have all kinds of, uh, it won't match the shape. So if it stays on there, just leave it on there. Just don't lose it. So this bowl is pretty clean. Good enough to use. Look at that, look at that nut. A lot of dust. It's not a jet nut, it's just a nut. So if you look at this, you lift, look at the float, and it's moving up and down, up and down. Test it by blowing into it when you lift it up. You know it's clear and not clogged. When it goes back down again, you blow. You can't blow. So, this is good. I'm not going to try to take that out because it looks like it won't come out. Sometimes when you try to get that out, you break it. So I have no reason to believe this is bad. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to blow out the areas here. It's pretty clean. There was no debris in there. Oh boy, here we go. There is a main jet thing in there. You know what happens when I do that. I hurt myself or I strip it. But I'm going to give an attempt. 
at it. These carburetor screwdrivers. The tips are very precise. Just got this one. Found it in somebody's trash. And this looks like it fits this one perfectly. Wow! That's two in a row. It just turned easily. I should go play Lotto. It's my lucky day. Do not lose this. It's in good condition and it's completely clear. Make sure of it. Is there another one in there? Usually there's another one in there. Uh-huh, there is another one. God, I'm gonna make me do this twice. This is the thicker, uh, wider one. Ah! No way! kind of fighting me a little. Probably kind of gummy in there, so... It's clear though, but I do want to try to get it out if I can, because um, there are tiny little holes in there that you want to clear. Coming out. Awesome. Man, that's three main jet nuts that I got out with a screwdriver. Look at that. Amazing. Don't tell me there's three. Oh, it does kind of look like there's three. That, that would be a first for me. I've never seen three. Should I try? This is probably just a um, housing. Nope, I'm not going to try. Because if I screw that up, Dunsky. It's just a housing for that, so I'm just going to blow it out. As you can see, you can see the tip. Can you guys see that? Oh, that's much better, isn't it? Duh. Anyway, so, look. This one here, I'm going to use the uh, bristle kind. Look at, look at the dust that is coming out. So I don't need to stick anything in there. <laughs> stick something in there. However, there's this bunch over here that could do some sticking. Okay. Got a twisty tie thing here. back. So I'm 
like this. Basically, this little one goes in the middle of that one. Feel the tread, it's going in, and just tighten it. That's it! I'm not going to screw with that anymore. So this was like that. This drain thing is always pointed forward. And clean this nut a little bit. Ah, toothbrushes. Hey, you gonna throw that toothbrush out? Don't throw that toothbrush out. I need it. What could you need that for? Machines don't have teeth. Oh, on the contrary. Machines have plenty of teeth. Such as on a flywheel, a gear. And these aren't necessarily for teeth, but rather for threads. Yes, that's right. Threads on bolts and nuts and studs and screws. They work great. And now, a word from our sponsors. I spend a lot of time here in Lucas Oil Stadium. And people expect me to have a winning performance, both here and when I'm on the road. Driving on the road like you, I expect my vehicles to have the same winning performance. And that's why I use Lucas Oil products on all my vehicles. From engine and transmission products to your fuel system and finished products, nothing works better. And to perform big at work, we all have to get there, right? Yes, I am feeling a little goofy. That was the first time I ever actually put a commercial in there. <laughs> Hope you guys appreciate it. It was uh, tough to extract. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, there is this one here that I guess I'm going to do. So I'm just going to remember how many turns. One half turn, one full turn. One half turn, one full turn. That's two full turns. Three full turns. Four full turns. Four and a half. Five full turns, five and a half, six full turns, and it comes out. Oh! Six full turns, and it came out. Okay? So I gotta put it back in six full turns. This is just the spring to keep it from turning too easily, and it was pretty easy. So what you do is you pull it a little bit, stretch it out just a little so it puts more tension on it. This is pretty good. And you want to make sure the tip is clear and sharp. And it's very sharp. Now the hole here. You can see a lot of crap right there. So I'm gonna brush away from it. Okay. 
just to make sure I didn't get anything in there. it's clear. I'm going to put this back now. I'm going to grab onto the thread that's that's right there. Okay, so six. One. Two, that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. That's six turns in, which is what what it was before. Not saying that's right. It's just that that was the way it was. You can adjust this later on if you get it running. Here's another screw that goes in there. That's a Phillips. stubby one. <clears throat> yeah, man, that one's really in there. Like it hasn't been taken out ever. Wow. There's a thing that holds another jet. Gotta do it. Gotta take that out too. Wow, this one's really loose. You know what? I bet you it's uh, adjusted. It's dirty too. So I have to count again just to make sure. And I'm gonna count in and see. One half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. You know what? Oh, shit. You know what? It's, uh, it doesn't turn. I mean, it turns, but it doesn't go in or out, you know? Which is odd. I think I just pull this out with, um, something. I'll, I'll try to pull it out with this. sat in there. There's no threads on it. It's only a uh, O-ring rubber that holds it in there. It's good I took that off because look, there's holes in it. So that came out of there, so watch. <laughs> right in my face. Go into the bowl, maybe? Uh huh. It, it is. There's a lot of jets in here, huh? And it's clear. It's not clear. Huh. Why would there be holes there if it wasn't clear? You know what I mean? See? Ah. 
This one actually doesn't go through on the top. Rather, it goes through on the bottom. See? So if I blast them on the bottom, you should see it. Alright, so uh, that's, that's a lot of screws and jets that we did. And basically, I'm just going to push this in. That was how we got it out. Pulled it out, so now we're just going to push it in. I guess it just sits in there like that. Now I'm going to put this back like this. I guess it just covers it. Well, it prevents the... I see. This has to be... This has to be completely... 180 degrees like that. This part here holds the thread like that. Holds the uh, position, I mean. There we go. See that? Alright, that's a comprehensive uh, cleaning, huh? Every jet that uh, this one has has been taken out and blown out. I'm pretty confident that this carburetor is going to work. Look at this idling screw. That's, that's, that's almost to the end. That's not right. It is to the end. That's not right. Maybe it ran well that way, but I'm going to loosen it a bit. what was in here oh, right here I don't know what that is but I don't think it goes anywhere up so it doesn't go anywhere all right well um I think that's that Now I'm going to put the throttle linkage on. Now I'm going to attach the tension spring. Oh, that's pretty easy. The gasket here is clean and good. Before I do that, I have to put the two studs in here. This is disgusting. I'm not going to go crazy, it's just the exterior. But nevertheless, you want to clean it anyway. Feel free to uh, pause and go take a leak, you know, drain the lizard, get a snack. Because I'm just going to let it roll. Most of you guys told me that you actually like seeing it roll like this because uh, you want to see exactly what I'm doing, you know. Instead of cutting it and then next frame you see is it's on already. It's like, well, how did you put that on? I want to see. Oh, well, yeah, you got a good point there. I've yelled at the screen before and go, well, how did you get that on? I want to see. I looked at the video to see how you got that on. 
I get it now. Which is why I'm doing it. Alright, so here's one of the studs. I'm just going to slip it partially through like that and hold it. A. I'm going to fit it through the area here with the bolt. And remember, uh, breather breather hose goes right in there too. So, gotta put that in first. Line up the hole. It's in. I'm turning the stud now. Finding the threads. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gasket. The gasket from this filter is not on there. There we go. There we go. I'm glad I remembered. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it on there. It's not critical. It's not. But Henry, it's gonna dip down with gravity and you're not gonna you know, it's gonna be a good seal. I can feel it with my hands. My the one next to the pinky finger, I could feel that it's flush. So it is on there. You just calm down, alright? Yes, I feel it. It's flush. Just to make sure it's in there. Grabbing the other stud. Awesome. And the breather hose is connected. Nice. Nice! wasn't too hard, right? Actually kind of fun. That's it. You don't want to overturn it. This one was uh, withered, so I just cut it. My uh, side cutters suck, but this one goes all the way in. I know that the fuel line is free and clear. some gas in it now. Gas. Leave it like that. Um, I'm gonna put some gas in it. So you know what's strange is I just put gas in there, right? Nothing comes out either way with the uh, shutoff on or off. Now it's kind of dripping down, but not a lot. So the lever is up for shutting it off, down for open. Uh huh. Now 
it's pouring out. I don't understand why it uh, took so long. Alright. I thought maybe the fuel filter, but I guess it takes a while to make it to seep through the fuel filter. See, so that lever is up for shut off, down for flow. So I'm going to now turn it back on and see if the carburetor leaks. Go! So there's a small gas leak that's coming from the petcock. The hose, this hose here has a little leak. It needs replacing. It's just a small drip right now. Um, I also found this throttle lever just so I can control the throttle. That's choke, that's off choke, full throttle, full throttle. So it works for now. When it doesn't pop up, it's not a Z-bend in there. I have to make a Z-bend, but I don't have a Z-bend tool. want it on choke, okay? Alright, I'm going to give it a pull, see what happens. Maybe I should primer it, huh? Doesn't help that it's hot either. I'm gonna take it off, choke. That's off, choke. Man, that's. It's hard to pull. <sighs> oh my god. So I uh, just fixed that uh, fuel leak. It was the area where it was all worn from the uh, fuel clamp. All right, so I don't know. I'm gonna check that spark plug again. See if we have spark.
little oily, but not too bad. But I'm gonna try another spark plug. This is this is really yucky. So I've got a new spark plug. It's the standard uh, RJ um, L70 RJ19 LM, right? It's not the same size as this, right? But if you just look at the tip, right? It just needs to go in that uh, half an inch or something like that. You know, then there are other ones that are almost a full inch that go in. This is trash. Um, they sent me a bunch of uh, about 10 or 12 of these brand new spark plugs. ProPartsDirect.net. Thank you. Hmm, should I blow some stuff in there? Why not? Helps the combustion. why I stopped it was because remember we didn't have any oil in there I mean hardly any oil but how about that guys started right up I'm gonna put some oil in it <laughs> there's like no oil in here it's ridiculous Put in some SAE 30 plus from my friends at Lucas Oil Products. I mean, I'm thinking if it's only like 20 ounces, right, for a push mower, it's got to take at least uh, three quarters of a quart, not a whole quart. I'll uh, let the level set for a bit and check it. I put about uh, three quarters in. It's uh, just below the ad line. I'm just going to dump the whole thing in there. I'm going to dump one full quart. That should be above the ad line and maybe a little above. Halfway between ad and full. Alright. So now we've got oil in there, got gas, fixed the fuel line, um, fixed the throttle, tentatively, changed the spark plug, clean the carburetor, yeah, that's uh, pretty much enough for one day actually, especially in 93 degree weather, you know what I mean? Woo! So 
Sounds great. Success! Success! switch on the back there so that's cool man we know the engine runs and runs pretty well I'm uh, pretty excited actually so uh, like you uh, guys know we got this for free that's right free got this thing for free um, Kawasaki FB 460 V engine runs great and I think I'm just gonna keep the engine part this thing out and get rid of it because uh, I'm happy with just the parts from it you know I can make a little bit of money off the parts I know the maybe the caster wheel assembly here maybe some money uh, gas tank for sure, maybe a lever or two, some rods, some springs, some pulleys, tires a shot, maybe the spindles. These pulleys are pretty good. Look at that. It's actually heavy duty, you know what I'm saying? And they roll pretty well. This is all cast iron, super heavy duty, you know? Um, so if I can get money for that, you know, maybe I'll get uh, 200 250 for the engine. You know, some landscaper may want it. And uh, that'll be worth it to me because if I had, if I went through the trouble of replacing the parts, maybe spending a hundred, two hundred dollars on getting parts to get the uh, all that other stuff going, and then sell it for four hundred, you know, what good is that? You know, that's that's getting two hundred net. You know, so that's not worth it. So uh, I think it's a, probably a better idea to part it out and uh, keep the engine or sell the engine. And um, yeah, that's probably my best idea. But in my next episode, I will humor myself. I will put the belts back onto the pulleys and the drive and see if it mows and drives well, as is. If it doesn't, then my decision's easy and just part it out. And then I'll follow that video with a teardown video. Yeah. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Before I go, just wanted to show you guys that I think I fixed the... Uh, the um, Kill switch, the shutoff. 
the tab was a little bent, so I just bent it towards where that thing, the lever, comes down and touches it. Oh, and by the way, you guys know what the Kawasaki FB46 uh, 460V engine produces. Is it 12.5 horsepower? Because I know the 260 on my uh, Scots, that uh, John Deere RX75, that was only 9 horsepower. So this has got to be 12 to 15, right? Anyway, let me know what the uh, rating is. Shift uh, throttle, throttle, and that's that. Thanks, guys, uh, for uh, following along this journey. Success, man. Free engine. Hey, guys, Boba, and I want to thank you for all the support of mowers and blowers. If you'd like. Make a short video clip like these, and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. See you guys next time, Mows and Blowers!